Whoops! Okay. So now we go over here. We dodge stuff. We wait. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? This is the chick coming at you with another build guide for season five. Today we're going to be talking about the Heart Seeker build. Mine is absolute garbage and it deletes stuff. As you just saw, it rip and pepperoni Uber Lilith without any issues whatsoever. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. But before we do, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and do anything you can to support the channel. So let's hop right into it. As always, we are going to start with the skills, which, you know, Heart Seeker is the most important one this time. So you're going to stack all of your points in the Heart Seeker. I'm at 17. I've seen people get over 20, 25. It's insane. This just goes nuts. You hit so hard, right? Enhanced Heart Seeker, it's going to give you some attack speed for four seconds, double the amount if they're vulnerable. Then we're going to get Primary Heart Seeker. You're going to get the Ricochets, which is strong AF. So we're going to be ricocheting, doing all the things. Down here in the core skills, we're just going to throw one into Sturdy to get some damage reduction. And then we're going to do one into Siphoning Strikes just to get some healing because we're going to be face taking a whole lot. Here, as usual, we're going to grab Shadow Step because it gives us, you know, breaks our CCs and stuff. Then we're going to grab Enhanced, so it's going to daze and apply Vulnerable. And then we're going to grab Disciplined to reduce the cooldown, which is amazing. This build uses Caltrops to increase the amount of damage that your opponents are taking from you by making them stand in it. Enhanced Caltrops, making them take increased damage, obviously. And then Methodical Caltrops, making them get chilled. And we do more damage to chilled enemies, so it is amazing. We use Weapon Mastery here because we're using a bow, increasing damage to vulnerable enemies. If you have a crossbow, it's going to increase your critical strike damage, which is also incredible because we crit a lot. We got dash just to dash, you know, dash is amazing. We have Unstable Elixirs using a potion that gives you 42% da uh, more damage for 10 seconds because we have lots of levels here. It's amazing, so you want to be popping your potion every 10 seconds. We have Trick Attacks going to stun enemies to give us more crit chance and crit damage. And they stack up to 96% because we have a ton of levels here too. It's because of our hats. Freaking amazing. We pop down to... Dark Shroud, everybody knows this is how we keep our defensives up. Each act of Dark Shroud gives you some movement speed and has a 15% chance not to get consumed. That's enhanced. And we're going to grab Subverting, which is going to heal when Dark Shrouds are removed. So when you get hit, it's going to heal you a little bit. It's really good. Exploit, 18% damage to healthy and injured enemies. Always pick this up. Same thing with Malice. More damage to vulnerable enemies and more damage to knockdown enemies. And they can apply at the same time. I'm going to grab Smoke Grenade because it is dazing the enemies and making them take more damage from us. And then we have Countering Smoke Grenade to reduce the cooldown on it. It's amazing. Most of our damage is coming from Cold Imbued Skills, so we're using this to our advantage. We are using Cold Imbuement, which is making them chill the enemies, getting our CC up faster. Cold Imbuement Skills have a chance to make them vulnerable, which is keeping our vulnerable up. And then cold imbuement skills do more damage to crowd control and enemies double if they're frozen. So all of our attacks are cold imbued, helping our damage go up. Frigid finesse, increased damage to chilled enemies. Bonus is doubled against frozen enemies, which is amazing. I have six stacks here. You can get it more than six. It stacks up and goes ham. We have 10 points in Innervation, which is awesome. It's giving us 100% chance on Lucky Hit to get energy. This is what's keeping our energy up on our build. We are using a generator, but you'll see why that's happening in a second. Alchemist Fortune, just 5% increased Lucky Hit chance to non-physical damage we deal, which is every arrow because they're all cold imbued. Then second wind, every 100 energy you spend grants you 90% of your maximum life as a barrier for three seconds. This is up basically all the time. It's amazing. Death Trap. We're using Death Trap to proc one of our passives that's giving us more damage uh, because of our amount of increased damage to our ultimate abilities. It also stacks them up for us, does a little bit of good damage. So that's what that does. Then we're using Close Quarters Combat. We're using this solely for the attack speed. We are not actually stacking damage to crowd control because that's not what we do anymore. But this is how the skills look. It's amazing. Obviously, if you have something you don't want to use this here, 
moving around somewhere else. Let's look at the Paragon. And as usual, before we hop into the Paragon, remember everything you get aside from the legendary nodes and the glyphs is for you. If you need to change something up, change it up. Make sure you get your armor nodes. Make sure you get your HP nodes. Make sure you get everything you need to make sure you are doing what you need to be doing so you can do what you need to do to make your build as good as it can be. So, first glyph here is control. It's going to give us increased damage to crowd control and enemies. You deal increased damage to chilled and frozen, which is amazing. Gives us extra damage and then gives us a couple other little bonuses. Kind of nice. First thing here, we have no witness. Ultimate skill grants you an additional 10% damage, which is what I was just telling you about. So just use your ultimate when it's up. It's just going to give you a flat 39% damage at all times. You can get up to 45 if you have enough damage on your gear. Here we have fluidity. It gives us maximum life. It gives us some strength. Whenever you cast an agility skill, you get increased damage and energy regeneration. We're spamming agility skills all the time. It is keeping us up all the time. It's amazing. Over here to the right, we have tricks of the trade. Marksman skills grant your cutthroat skills increased damage. Cutthroat skills grant your marksman skills increased damage. So we are always using our marksman skill and we're moving around with our cutthroat skills, which is going to keep this up the majority of the time. We are using chip, which is amazing. It's give us extra physical damage. Physical damage increases the damage an enemy takes from you by 1% up to 10% for 15 seconds. This is basically stacked all the time. It is really strong. Helps us out a lot. Over here we have Deadly Ambush. You can do increased critical strike damage to enemies affected by your trap skills. We are going to be using Smoke Grenade and Caltrips all the time, which are both trap skills. It's going to keep them debuffed and taking more damage from us. It is amazing. Here we have Ambush, which is awesome it's dealing more damage to trapped enemies which i just said they're going to be all the time to take increased damage from us while trapped so it's going to be rolling hard all the time then up here we have cheap shot you deal increased damage for each nearby enemy that is crowd controlled nearby staggered bosses provide the whole bonus so this is up all the time it's amazing because rcc is insane then we have canny which is going to give us non-physical damage all of our stuff is cold imbued it's going to be dealing big damage it's awesome non-physical damage increases all non-physical damage an enemy takes from you by one percent up to ten percent so this is always up it's amazing and then lastly but not leastly we have exploit weakness lucky hit hitting a vulnerable enemy has a chance to increase your damage up to 25 percent 25 percent it remains for six seconds and expires we are hitting so fast so often and so much that this is just crazy uptime all the time on this right this is great. So we're going to look at my gear and my gear is bad because I wasn't able to get all the stats that I need. First thing you want cowl of the name builds. This is giving you increased crowd control duration, which is amazing. It's giving you rapid gambits, which is good. Unstable elixirs is amazing. We just talked about that. And then trick attacks is also awesome. You can get your trick attacks way up. And being able to have the extra lucky hit chance against crowd controlled enemies is going to keep our energy up non-stop. Right? This is amazing. So here, I have Tyrael's Might. Do you need Tyrael's Might? The answer to that question is no, you do not need Tyrael's Might. If you do not have Tyrael's Might, get a chess piece that has levels to Dark Shroud and put the Might enchant on it so you will be getting reduced damage. It will work really well. And so you get your Tyrael's Might, you'll have to itemize a little differently to make sure that you're getting all of your resistances. However, get Tyrael's Might when you can. It's amazing, but you can use a regular chess piece in the meantime. Pangorger's Gauntlets, get a better pair than mine. Mine are bad. So you have a chance to stun, you have cooldown reduction, you have attack speed, you have big increases to basic skills, which is one of my downfalls on my gear. This could be much better. And this is the worst roll you can get on getting extra damage on your marked enemies. My damage could literally be doubled. Get better Pangorger Gauntlets than mine but get Pangorger Gauntlets. These are amazing. Umbrus on your pants. Always Umbrus on your pants because this is going to make you get your Dark Shrouds without having to push a button. It's going to make it easy to keep up your defensives. And in your armor, if you need more HP, put red gems. If you are not dying at all, put green gems because Dex is king. So here, I would much rather have a roll of something with smoke grenade making it last longer or getting a 
duration reduction here on the instead of that lucky hit to daze because I already daze. You want to get second wind because second wind is just amazing. We talked about that in the skill section. If you missed it, go back and check it out. Here's where I chose to get my extra armor because I didn't have enough armor to be capped. So if you have armor, here you go. If you don't have armor, it's a good spot to get it. But you want to make sure that you have heart seeker levels on your pants. If you can GA them, that's even better. But this is helping you get your damage up. Penitent Greaves, I really like these. They chill, they give you some more cold resistance, makes your chill stronger, gives you extra crit strike chance against chilled enemies, and they always roll really decent movement speed, and you deal more damage to chilled enemies. These are just good. I, You don't have to have these. You could probably do like Beast Fall Boots or um, Noxious Ice or something. I don't know, but these are great. I love these. So the bow we have of the moonrise so this is going to be increasing your damage of basic skills increasing the attack speed of your basic skills and giving you more damage and giving you more move speed and it's just really 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 good so what you need to do you need to make sure that you roll high enough on your heart seeker that when you masterwork it you will be able to get the total amount to over a hundred percent. So I'm at 110.5. If you roll, I think it's either 59 or 69 percent, you will be able to get over a hundred percent by hitting the masterwork once. That's where you want to be. Just reset it until you hit the masterwork once. Then you're good to go. So mine happens to have GA and some decent decks. If this had critical strike damage, I'd be much happier, but it has regular damage. So my bow is not very good. Get a better one than mine. Over here we have Conceited. What Conceited does is you deal increased damage when you have a barrier. We always have a barrier thanks to our lucky hits. Here you want to have Dex, Max Life, Critical Strike Damage. You want it to look exactly like this. You want to have Damage per Dark Shroud and you want to have Caltrip Duration. Over here on this one you want to have Damage per Dark Shroud as well, but you need the projectiles to cast twice, so you're dealing twice as much DPS. Shard of Varathiel. This amazing, amazing item here is giving you more attack speed on your basic attacks, increasing the levels of your basic attacks, and mine rolled crap, but you get increased damage, but they cost primary resource. So if you get a better one of these rolls closer to 200%, you are just going to be doing multiplicatively more damage just by existing. It's amazing. And as you can see, I got the ultimate damage in my weapons to get that buff from the Paragon tree. Here I have armor gems in all of my things here because I needed them to get armor capped. This is what you want your regular ring to look like. You want some attack speed, dexterity, you want to make sure you get innervation rolled on it, and you want to make sure that you get damage per dark shroud. Get one that's got better rolls than me, obviously, but this is looking pretty good. I still need to master work everything up, so there you go. If you do not have a ring of starless skies, you just literally make exactly the same ring. Make two of those. Two of those, and it is going to be god mode. That's exactly what you want. Obviously, if you can get some GAs, do it. But once you get ring of starless skies, you want to have ring of starless skies because it is just one of the best items in the game. Two of these... If you do not have Ring of Starless Skies, instead get um, Retribution, because Retribution is going to do a little more damage, so you'll be good to go there. On your neck, you're going to use Adaptability, which is going to make your basic skills do more damage, because when you're above more resource, you get the things. When you're below, they give you some more resource back, so doing the things. You want Innervation and Damage per Dark Shroud here. What you would like to get is Exploit, Malice, Frigid Finesse. Good luck. Godspeed to you. It is impossible. I've still not got one that's even remotely worth using. This one just happens to have some frigid finesse. It's doing good. All right, so showed you guys a little kill. I'm going to show you guys a seven here, um, mainly because seven is just a good spot for farming. Um, eight is good, but doing sevens comfortably fast is where you want to be. So. Obviously, this is going to go destroy anything that's a nightmare dungeon. You're going to be able to do any speed running through any of the other content with this. This is going to be good for anything that's fast. You're just going to run around and delete stuff. And you'll be able to do your hordes with this. You'll be able to do nightmare dungeons with this. If you want to level some glyphs, you'll be able to do the um, pit with this. If you want to do the pit, it's really good for everything. 
it is a little bit squishy in here until you get started so be a little careful don't get hit get your stacks up and then go ahead and lag apparently um, but after you get your stacks up you're good to go desecrators as always are basically the only dangerous thing one of the greatest things about this build when you're in here doing this is you can literally just stand wherever you want and shoot because your things ricochet and they're homing missiles right so go where you need to go if there is something you want to do just stutter step and shoot while you're stutter stepping and you will do everything that you want to do right all right so we got a desecrator he swings we jump behind him we just go ahead and take him out before he can hit us same thing, right? You just want to make sure you are paying more attention to the desecrators than anything because they, as always, are basically the most dangerous thing in the whole game right now. But as long as you've got some stacks on your uh, shield, you'll be fine. You want to make sure you're using your abilities on cooldown to make sure you're keeping up your buffs. You're going to be using your ultimate on cooldown, stacking stuff up, dealing some extra damage with it and things. So you use your potion every 10 seconds to make sure you're keeping up your uh, extra damage because it is a lot of extra damage. But as you can see, you don't have any issues here at all. So let's get our Hellborn to chase us. As you're using your abilities, you're going to keep your, um, well, everything at full so you don't really have to worry about it. But use all of your buffs, keep everything up. As you can see, we just delete everything. This build is not as tanky as the Andarials build, but the damage is definitely there. So if you prefer this play style, you can play this. And this is also a really good build to put together if you don't have your Andarials yet, because it's gonna make it super easy for you to farm everything that you need for Andarials. Um, this build works really well without any uniques. I just happen to have a couple of uniques from my other builds. This build is just really good at doing everything. So as you're playing with this build and running through everything, you're going to be just deleting stuff. And you don't even have to try, right? You don't even have to look in the general direction. This is a very much, you want to watch Netflix and farm. This is that build, right? You don't have to think. You really don't have to do anything other than hit your potion every couple of seconds. Use your cooldowns when they're up. Like, if you just spammed your buttons while you were running around, you wouldn't even have to worry about it. You would be fine. Um, and my favorite thing about it is, like, as you're running around and doing everything, the missiles are homing. You don't have to pay attention. Like, you can just, cool, I'm going to hold down the button and look in the general direction of the thing. Cool. Rip. Oh, hey, there's a captain. Oh, no. Oh, there's not. He got ripped. Okay, so the mass is over there off of my screen. It's gone now. We're just popping around. Okay, look at all these heckborn. Let's just pop some cooldowns, back up, let them get stacked. Oh, hey, look, they got, like, two shots. All right, there's some more. Oh, they didn't even get to see me. Oh, hey, look, there's some more. Like, it's just, it's easy, dude. Like, this build is chill. This build is fun. This build is... Like I said, the only thing it doesn't have going for it is it's not as tanky, and that is just because it doesn't have the life per hit from the Andarials that the other build has. Um, there may be a way to implement the Andarials into this. Uh, I don't know how well it would be or how well it would work because we do get a lot of levels of things from our Cal the Nameless, right? So it's gonna be good. Um, that's just how that goes, right? Like it's just chill, it's easy. You can farm your sevens, you can farm all of the mats you need, you can farm all of the legendaries you need, you can just run it back on repeat because this build is super easy to play, it's super effective, you don't really have to do anything special. Um, you can just run around and do what you need to do, right? Um, it is super easy, super chill, you can stutter stuff forever, you don't have to worry about anything because your attack speed is not high enough that stutter stepping is detrimental. Um, you can literally like do what I'm doing here and I'm just spam clicking while I run around and this is a perfectly viable way to play it. And then once you get an, uh, an elite on the screen, um, do a cow trip and 
hit it with a smoke grenade and then watch it fall over because it just takes increased damage, right? Um, same thing with your potion, like use your potion every 10 seconds. Like you're gonna get more potions. Don't forget that your potion gives you basically 50% multiplicative more damage. Like it is no joke. All right, um, yeah, let's do the, the Hellfire because we might get the one that makes the Hellfire spawn the Hellborn, which would be great. Yeah, so, all right, so, mm, hey, 17 million, just casually as you please, right? Like, this is so good, guys, it's so good. And again, I'm doing this much work with this build, and my gear is bad. My gear is not optimized. This is what I got this morning to make the build work so I could show you guys how to do it. This is not a good setup for this. My gear is poop de poop de paints. If you get better gear than me, you are not going to do the struggles that I have. I have some struggles because my survivability is bad. Right there, I got CC'd into the dirt. I'm going to leave that in the video because you guys do need to see that even good builds can get ripping pepperoni. But the thing is, what got me wasn't the damage, it was the CC. Being frozen is a problem. And I had already used my get out of CC free card to get out of a previous CC. So I was sitting there and I just had to watch my character get ripping pepperoni. Fine. Doesn't really matter anything. You're still fine. You don't have anything to worry about. I'm going to grab the Butcher just to show you guys that, like, you yeet strong mobs off the map. Like, when he spawns, I am going to decimate him. So let's see where he's at. All right, there he is. Cool. Jump on him. Pop all my cooldowns. Try not to die because, you know, he is the Butcher. But, um, cool. Cool. We're going to get him CC'd here in a second, and when we do, he is just going to fall over. There's not going to be any issues. Well, he might even not get CC'd before he gets ripped. Alright, cool. Let's go. Alright, there we go. He is dead. See how easy that was? Now, obviously, you have to pay attention to your HP, because he's the Infernal Butcher, but, like, I didn't have any issues taking him out, alright? Just had to make sure I wasn't standing in bed, and I was fine. And as you can see, as long as there are adequate enemies on the screen, we don't really have to worry about our resource because our arrows bouncing around is keeping our resource really full. And see, seeing things, it's giving us back, you know, it's making it easier for us to rip and pepperoni stuff. We have really nothing to worry about. All right, so let's see what we got here. Um... Ooh, yeah, so now our Hellfire is spawning Hellborn, and each Hellborn is dropping more stuff. So we are getting better and better and better. We're being able to keep everything rolling. Um, now, do keep in mind, you do get to use your cooldown for your potion as an actual DPS cooldown, but... Remember, sometimes you will still need to heal, so you might want to take it a little easy sometimes. Um, so, if you're taking more damage than you think you should, maybe you should hold off on using your potion to deal more DPS, stuff like that. Other than that, though, you are just ripping pepperoni everything, as you can see. The Hellborn just basically fall over. You debuff them, you shoot them a couple times, they boop. Um... Got the Soul Spire here. These are super easy with this build because you don't have to... Basically, you don't have to do anything. You don't even have to move. You can just stand right there and your ricocheting bolts are going to just... Do everything for you. So, we're still rolling. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Let's increase the speed that we get these things. That'd be good. Might be able to get a little more... Hellborn to spawn that way. But yeah, you just keep your buffs up. And you don't have to worry about anything. Like, you just basically one-shot the world. Um, and then I'll show you the bosses here in just a moment. It is super easy to rip the bosses, guys. The bosses are a joke 
and a half of this build because like as long as you are uh, doing things in their general direction oh my god <laughs> if I could quit getting CC that would be excellent um yeah as long as you're doing things in their general direction you will take the bosses out with no issues um our boss damage as you can see from the first clip is obscene you just drop the boss in like two seconds um it, like the second phase of uber lilith took what you saw it it was like basically instant they got ripping pepperoni it was gg we, we did the thing all right we did the thing all right one more wave left and then we get the bosses what do we got here? Um, don't want that. Um, let's see. What is our total all resist? Let's look. 44, 44, 157, 74. Yeah, eh, we'll take that. We'll take reduce all 10, all thingies by 50% because we have them all. All right, fine. All right, so all we got to do is survive one more round and we will be at the boss. Obviously, this is not concerning. I'm not worried at all. Like, the only thing that can really mess us up is the Desecrator. And if we have our things and we don't get CC'd, we aren't worried about the Desecrator. So, there we go. Um, well, I hit the wrong button there, but it's okay. Something might step in it. <laughs> Alright, uh, there we go. Hellborn. They just get yeeted, right? Like, as soon as they get CC, they're yeeted. Alright, so Aether Lord, done. Barbarian CC'd me a little bit. We don't care. We got through it. Like, he was there and then he wasn't. Right? Like, GG well played, right? Alright, what we got over here? We got some more Hellborn. They didn't even get to move, really. Do some stutter stepping. Dodge some things. Wunderbar. Alright, now, go get the bosses. So, I originally thought the bosses were going to be a pain with this build, and then I fought the bosses, and it is a joke. Alright, so you see which bosses pop up, pick the one you want to take out first, cool, let's go with this guy. Alright, cool. Pop the potion. Stand on him. He is going to get ripped in his first CC. Well, he was, but I messed it up, so womp. Alright, so just pop all your buffs. You got him. Cool. Alright, one is down. Pop your potion, get your buff up. Because that's a lot of damage. Alright, now let's go get Ishmael. Let's get him dotted up. Let's get everything on him. Pop your potion. There you go. Easy, easy, easy. Easy sevens. Easy money. Easy XP. Easy mats. And this is without everything being 12. Like, just, if you're still putting your builds together, focus on getting this together first, because even when it's bad, it's good, and then even once you get it good, it's even better. Right? Anyway, if you guys stuck around to the end, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, come join the Discord, hang out with us, play games with us, see what we're doing, see what we're up to, and I will see you guys in the next one.